people with the link who join this. So, yeah, okay. so maybe put it, put it uh, as a public so anyone who sees the YouTube channel can see it. Because it's very strange because only the people join this. Okay. So I send you the link yeah, by so the chat. Yeah, now. I send you by the chat in the Zoom and by personal chat. Okay, so well, I hope the the persons can go to the channel and check out the new link. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we can start the session. Yeah. So, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, please don't, we are not professors. So yeah, don't be shy to ask anything. Uh, so for break out a bit the eyes, I will going to present myself, um, Manuel Morgado. Maybe a few of, uh, of you have read, uh, like post a few things in the Facebook group or in the Riot. Uh, I was a former Master 2 student. I did my, uh, the specialization of uh, condensed matter and nanophysics in 2018, 2019. Uh, and later I joined to a PhD uh, position with, uh, in the, within the Professor Shannon Whitlock group uh, within, uh, in the program, PhD program Khaled Kustek of EOCore. Uh, so yeah, maybe here we also have uh, Denise. He's a local student from Strasbourg. And um, Blue and um, Begop, uh, who is also a local student. So maybe you can introduce yourself, Denise, and then. Yeah. Blue. So yeah. So yeah, I, I was a master student. So I did both my master, two years of the master degree in France, uh, as part of QMAT, and now I'll be starting my PhD. Uh, so in the group of. Um, Paul Antoine Hergeau, he is one of the supervisors of QMAT. Uh, like I will be starting in October. And so, yeah, as Manuel said, I'm a local student. I'm from Strasbourg and I did all my uh, university studies in Strasbourg. Uh, but uh, I kind of represent this, the master students uh, as part of the steering committee and the YIG, the Young Investigators Group. Uh, that's also a part of uh, QMAT. So you will know more about YIG uh, when the year will be, will be starting. We'll have a, a welcome meeting and a welcome presentation. But uh, so it's kind of just a student uh, group of all students that are part of QMAT. And uh, so we're here to help you with all the questions you can have regarding the, your, your arrival in Strasbourg and uh, the student life and etc. So yeah, that's it. Good. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, hi, uh, me, I am Bluen and I was a QMAT student during my master in condensed matter and physics. Uh, and, I, uh, and I would like to pursue a PhD in experimental quantum science. So don't hesitate to ask any question. Good. So maybe if you uh, we have a couple of you here in the Zoom meeting. So if you would like to introduce yourself, also people, if there is anyone watching on YouTube, they're also encouraged to present us, uh, themselves by, you can write it there in the chat that we can, we will read it here. So yeah, who would like to start? I think you can, all of, of you can, I mean, any of you can unmute them yourself, the left bottom. Yeah. Hello, um, I'm Abdullah from Egypt. Um, I will join the M1 um, from QMAP program this year. Um, 
and um, I did my bachelor's degree in physics. Um, and uh, I've not yet decided which group I will be joining in the next year. I'm just here to explore. Good. Pleased to meet you, Abdallah. Uh, nice, nice to meet you too, Manuel. Okay. So, yes, somebody else will talk. Also, if you want to turn on your camera, you are free to do it, I believe. Good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Aliu, Joanna, Peter, Tung. I, I just want to test my uh, microphone. Oh, sorry. Can, can... I... Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, uh, yeah. Leon. Oh, I'm so sorry, uh, my mic was wrongly configured. So uh, I wanted to present myself. I'm Leon. I'm uh, from German origin, but I studied my, most of my time in France, so also preschool and everything. And uh, I was studying now for two years in, in the licence uh, physique chimie, so physics and chemistry. Uh, and my first year was in Germany in material science. And yeah, now I'm here in QMET and I'm joining the materials and nanoscience master together with QMET, of course. All is good. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you. Nice to meet you too, guys. Well, oh, here, you, the, here in, in Strasbourg is a very, I will say, very nice place because they have the, the, the convergence of the culture, of the German culture and the French culture, which is the Alsatian culture. So I'm pretty sure you will find very comfortable here in Strasbourg. Yeah, I don't know if you're already. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was now for two years. I was in, I joined the second year, Licence uh, Physics and Chemistry in 2018, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, uh, so you, you, you're already accustomed with uh, Strasbourg beer. Yeah, it's been so two right. years now that I've been <laughs> living in Strasbourg. So yeah, I'm used to it. I really like it. Really, really like it. <laughs> very, very nice. Um, Tung, do you? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Tung, and I'm uh, from Vietnam. So, uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, uh, I'm I will be joining QMAT in uh, for the program in astrophysics for M two. And uh, yeah, last year I was. Uh, I was also accepted to QMAT, but uh, I, I couldn't come because uh, of the time conflict. And I just, uh, I need to finish my bachelor degree and uh, I, I wasn't be able to join QMAT in uh, August last year. So this year I, I I did my M1 in my country and now uh, this year I, I, I planning to come to Strasbourg this year. It's nice to meet you everyone. Nice to meet you too. I hopefully soon you can finally join in QMAT. Thank you. So bon courage, as the French people says. So yeah, so we have uh, Joanna and Peter. Hello everyone. I'm Joanna and I'm a local student. So I'm from Strasbourg and I studied in Strasbourg and now I'm joining the M2 uh, matter, common matter and nanophysics um, in September. And this past two years, I was preparing the aggregation of uh, physics and chemistry. So that's why I was, uh, <laughs> I'm a bit late and I know, um, I don't know the people of uh, the next year. So I'm here to uh, meet uh, some people. <laughs> Great. Uh, I, I can answer some questions because I was also in Strasbourg for six years now. Nice to meet everyone. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Yeah. Nice to meet you. You you chose the correct uh, you chose the correct master. The correct <laughs> <entry>. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very good it's a very good program. I have to say. I hope that they with the time they will get improved. Uh, but yeah, it's a very good master and I believe the professors there are very, very good. So yeah, I think Peter, if you want to present yourself. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm Peter, I'm from Greece and I'm joining 
the M1 program uh, this September. Uh, I'm mostly interested in high energy physics. And yeah, <laughs> nice to meet you also, everyone. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you too. So Abdal, uh, you also are in high energy physics, right? For M1? Yeah, yes. Oh, good. So you have now a mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So the people who are in YouTube, I'm not sure exactly how yeah. many, I think. You there are six for now. Okay. So please, uh, yeah, you can write it in chat and we will be happy to read your presentation if you cannot join on Zoom. Uh, so in the meantime, the, the, so this, this uh, session was uh, organized because I know there is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, questions coming to Strasbourg, uh, mostly, yeah, uh, free arrangement, uh, like housing visas and that kind of things. Of course, we are not uh, experts on this. So we are just students who pass through the same. Uh, we will try to answer any questions that you have. And, yeah, try to keep tips. And if we can do anything else, we I think in my side, for example, I'm very happy to help. So yeah, here, uh, Aliu, you just join again. So I don't know if Aliu, you want to present yourself. Uh, you can unmute yourself in the lop, uh, left button. Okay, maybe he doesn't have a, or also you can write it here in the chat. So, okay, so I prepare a couple of slides. To try to more or less uh, that I try to summarize a bit the information uh, that I have and I use when So, uh, yeah, uh, do you, can you, any of you can give me feedback if you're watching my slides? Yeah, I can see the slides. I'm Good. seeing your screen. Okay. Wait a sec, my computer is a bit stressed. Okay, so the first thing I, I will suggest since now Kim it's a bit more established that when I came is to meet your or meet your other Kim uh, that's very useful if you for example wants to uh, rent a flat or do you want to do some uh, tour together or for example Humat uh, support uh, visits to for example CERN um, or an, any other company or to go to a conference or a school. Actually this year they were planning to go to a school in Julich in Germany. Uh, unfortunately uh, was canceled due to the whole business, the, the, the Corona business. But uh, yes, this is, a, I would say it's the first thing you should do when you come to QMAT. Meet your other fellows. There is a master one, master two and PhD fellows also to exchange uh, a point of view of the programs. For example, if you're in a master one and then you are not, I mean, and you're doing uh, some kind of um, specialization in uh, teaching or in high energy physics or condensed matter, uh, you are not sure, you can talk to the students in master two and then have a feedback about how it is in the master two, if you think you will like it or not. Uh, all the same for a PhD student, you, uh, you should ask them how is to do a PhD, uh, what that implies, and if you uh, in that way you uh, you will find out if you really want to uh, do the the PhD or not. So that's the first thing. Second thing, it's uh, we'll know a bit about the university. So okay, this is Strasbourg, and what is pointed out here in the map, it's the different campus of the university. Uh, as far as you know, there is like five campuses. Maybe Denise can correct me. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. So uh, the important ones for for us physicists is the campus of Esplanade and the campus of Cronenberg. So 
This is the, where the campus of Esplanade and the medicine campus is. This is the campus of Cronenberg, the campus of Mineo and Ilkir. And in the campus of Esplanade, it's where there is most of the important buildings. So for the master one, I believe there is some, uh, some lectures uh, in Lebel Institute. Uh, I, I think the no, normally normally not actually it's it, it's rare. Uh, most of the lectures for the M1 are in the Faculty of Physics. In the Faculty of Physics, so the Faculty of Physics is close to to Esplanade. So this is uh, here below is the Esplanade. You can see the institute level, and the Faculty of Physics is a couple of streets away, close to the Botanical Garden. If you want to have a reference. Uh, also in the in the central campus in the Esplanade campus, it's uh, a few important buildings. The Platan, that's very important for international students, uh, because here at the beginning of the year you can find information regarding the the Titre Sejour, which is the per resident per uh, permit. I will explain a bit more later. Uh, also, if you want to get uh, some. Uh, services from the campus or some information regarding the the transport. Uh, and yeah, mostly transport and another academic stuff, which I don't have in my at the moment. And also in patio, but mostly I went to Platam. It's just two buildings that are besides. Uh, of course, the the this, the library of Esplanade. The before was called U2, U3, but I believe now they change it that it has an, a different name. Uh, yeah, and also uh, there will be a new library that will be opening normally soon, but because of the corona, nothing is, is sure any, anymore. But normally uh, by the beginning of 2021, there will be a new library just next to Label. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I believe it's going to be around here. I don't know if you can see my... Uh, so, yeah, uh, what else, if you are going to do uh, a stash, which is a kind of, well, the, the translation would be an internship, uh, there, here in Estras, uh, here in the Esplanade, that you will find the ISIS, uh, it's the Institute of Science and uh, Supramolecular Engineering, uh, very bad acronym, but yeah, that's the name. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, and also you can find the Faculty of Math, the fac uh, some uh, research buildings of biology, and uh, there is right. also the Faculty of Chemistry just in front of the laboratory. Exactly, the Faculty of Chemistry as well, and there is a couple of restaurants. The, the, there is the restaurant of Pulapel, which also include uh, there is a, a complete student campus, which means there is a residence in there. Uh, we will also talk about it. Here, I can share with you in a, by email this, this slide, so in, in such a way that you can, uh, uh, yeah, uh, click on these links and go directly. Okay, so the, in this map, the, you will notice also in order to restaurants, or camp, uh, yeah, restaurants, the, the, I think this is the cruise restaurant in Esplanade and the Gallia. In Gallia, there is also a student's residence of cruise. Then in Cronenberg, there is more, it's a campus mostly focused on, on research. Here is- Just for information, uh, you have approximately 20 minutes by, by tram and by bus from the central campus to the Cronenberg campus and approximately maybe 10 minutes by bus from the central train station to the Cronenberg uh, campus, just for people to know. So it's a two different parts of the city and uh, it, normally people take the tram and then the bus and it takes approximately 20 minutes to go from one campus to the other. Yeah, so for example, in this slide, you can see that here, uh, there is the 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 the, camp, the Esplanade campus and Cronenberg is here in the top left. So uh, yeah, that's a bit far, but I won't say it's impossible to reach. There is uh, many ways to reach it. So here in Cronenberg, there is IPCMS, ICS, and ICPM and IPHC, which are the institutes where uh, I, I believe uh, most of the um, Master two have lectures. 
uh, so if you are in high energy physics, you probably have a few classes in IPHC buildings. If you're doing MSEN, you will have lectures in IPCMS, maybe in ICS. Yeah. And I believe the people mainly in IPCMS. IPCMS, uh, but yeah, I, yeah. And uh, but but uh, there is some lectures with the professor Charitat, I believe. I, they, yeah, but this year this year they were they, they, they were done inside the IPCMS. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, and I think the people of material science, uh, of uh, yeah, material science or whatever that name of that career is, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it they see the I, I think they, they have lectures in ICPM and of course there's a library yeah, actually the M1 uh, the M1 normally have all their courses uh, in the um, at, uh, as we said in the central Esplanade campus but uh, during the second semester they will have one day where they will have their courses at the ECPM too. So in the Cronenberg campus, it's to allow students for one day to go to the, let's say, research campus in the M1. Just to sum it up, the M2 students have almost all their courses at the research center, so at the research campus of, a, of the Cronenberg that you're seeing right now. And the M1 students, so the first year of master, have most of the courses uh, at the uh, central Esplanade campus. Uh, es uh, except one day per week where they have it at the ECPM. Good. I did not know that. <laughs> okay. Now you know. <laughs> and uh, of course, there is a, a restaurant of cruise in the in the campus of of of, of Cronenberg. Uh, yeah, there is a few a few other places. If you want to eat close by, like uh, there is a supermarket, there is a bakeries, uh, some fast food in case you don't want to eat in the in this restaurant. But uh, it's uh, more cheap than I believe that any other place, considering or taking in consideration the the amount of food with a relation with the yeah. price. Exactly. Yeah, it's so, normally uh, approximately three three and a half euros for the whole meal. So it's a very competitive price. For me, it was 350, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I just say approximately. Okay, yeah. So yeah, the one thing when you have to do when you come is to register the university. Uh, I didn't put too many details on this, uh, but there is, a, you have to complete a registration academic registration and administrative registration, apart from the fact that you have to do payment of the annual fee, which is the CVEC, which is new from two years ago, since two years ago. I believe that's approximately 90 euros. The administrative registration is uh, below 280, I believe, uh, for M2. if you starting PhD or master, right? Yeah, I think PhD, it's a three, four, 380. Uh, Master 2, it's 280 when I subscribe, approximately. And M1, I just really don't know. I think it's cheaper. M1 is the same as M2. M1 is okay. the same as M2. Okay. If I remember so, correctly, uh, me, because I, I, of, oh, sorry. Yeah, just to say, I, I will be right back. I just need to go somewhere. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Be okay. Right back. So, Leo? I, I just wanted to say I already did the um, whole uh, inscription, the whole uh, enrolling thing. And if I remember correctly, it was 243 for the masters and 92 for the CVEC. Okay. So, like 350, roughly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, yes, you have to consider that. I, 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 for, for my time, uh, the master, this master fee uh, with the university was uh, possible to pay in, in two or three parts. So, this three next months, like in September, October, and November. Uh, so, that's something that it's very helpful for uh, foreigner students. Uh, and after this, uh, of course, you always need first the CVEC. Without that number, without that uh, code, uh, nothing can advance. So first CVEC, then the registr administrative registration with the faculty. 
And then it's the academic registration, which me, which uh, it's uh, related to what courses you would like to register in your academic year or in your semester. Uh, when I did the master two, we have some a couple of weeks to complete this academic registration because uh, the first week there was a presentation of the elective courses. So there is a core courses where it's obligatory, mandatory, compulsory. And then there is a, another group of courses that uh, there are uh, free to choose. Uh, and then you can see a few, a couple of lectures and then decide what to take. Uh, so yeah, that's the three things. Uh, so here I'm talking about the campus pass, which is no more than the student ID. This student ID is very helpful for access to the cruise restaurant, to the to the transport. It's, you can use your car for the public transport. Uh, you can get some uh, discounts in cultural cultural events. You can use photocopy machines, uh, access to sports. Uh, and for each year you register at the university, you get a new sticker. Uh, so yes, this is also very important. This I think takes a couple of weeks to re, uh, to get it because they have to make it and then have to go to the faculty and then you can pick it up. At least when I did the master two. Uh, so yeah, you can do easily payments, which uh, are related to some food machines, uh, beverage machines, and uh, laundry machines at the cruise. Uh, so yeah. I don't know if I'm missing any other use for this car, blue one, Leon. Um, so. uh, something which is very important, it's uh, to have this card for the different exams. Oh, okay. So yes. you need to present your car for do the exam. Yes, exactly. And you need to have the good uh, sticker for the, the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and also you need something that is called uh, numero de anonimat, it's like a, right? Uh, could you repeat your question? Uh, uh, it's necessary to have the numero de anonimat, uh, like anonymous number for percent exams. Uh, so you need your card uh, and you need a numero de anonima. So you can have this numero uh, with uh, uh, on the web, so you need to connect to connect you and uh, to after uh, go to a specific session to ask uh, the the email. Yeah, so yeah, so I think uh, exactly. So that you need the 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 number, the uh, anonymous number that you need to put in your exam instead of your name usually, and then in this way the prof uh, the 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 grading of the exams becomes uh, clear and transparent. And afterwards, you can go with your student card, apart from the, at the day of the exam, and your number, and then you can check your exam. Uh, so yeah. So, and this number you can get it in the, in the system. So I think now it's, get, it's uh, obtainable through Ernest. Uh, which is the platform, the online platform for uh, for everything you want to do with the university via online. So like Moodle, which is a kind of uh, platform for get uh, material for the lectures, for get your email account and um, get some documents from the university. So there is other links here, there is EOCore, EOCore, it's a, it's a European consortium of universities in this region. Um, there is a Karlsruhe uh, Institute of Technology in Germany, Freiburg University in Germany, Strasbourg, the High, uh, How, High Alsace, How the SAS University, also here in Strasbourg or Mulhouse, I think. Um, and Basel, the University of Basel. So this is a, a, a nice uh, additional thing to Nistra that they are in within this uh, corporation. Then you can try to see if you can do your internship within this uh, consortium. So another group that it's in the in University of 
universities of this consortium or uh, have some lectures. So uh, Denise maybe later can explain a little bit because I understand Denise did his uh, stash, his, his short internship of M1 in a group in the University of Basel. Uh, so yes, this is a very nice uh, thing that this region has. Ernest, as I it said, it's uh, the general platform of UNISTRA. Uh, then there is a link to a faculty of physics. There you can find the programs. Probably most of you already had the, uh, passed through this website and the research institutes that I have within my knowledge. There's probably more. Uh, so IPCMS, so Institute of uh, Physics and Chemistry Materials, I think. Uh, ICS, Institute Charles Sandron, and then Yes, the other ones I already mentioned for high energy physics, material science, and uh, physics chemistry, which is ISIS. So the other thing is the public transport. Public transport can, for my own experience, I can tell can become very uh, expensive if you, if one doesn't do it on time. So, uh, so here in Strasbourg we have uh, the CTS is a. Uh, it's the company of the public transport, and one can get uh, that uh, annual uh, a men, uh, monthly payment for all travels during a month in the tram, in the uh, buses, uh, which is uh, depending of your e mensual income, your monthly income uh, can be 27 or 13 if you are below 26, and if you are uh, between 26 and 64, you pay 51 or 25, depending on your income. I don't think any of you will have more income than that. I mean, that this is a, a coefficient, uh, a family coefficient. And yeah, I don't know exactly how this is calculated, but I'm pretty sure students are usually within these two stacks. So for forgive uh, uh, an order of magnitude, 10 tickets, if you just go to the machine, uh, it's approximately 13 euros. Uh, so if you are below 26, uh, you have a low income. Uh, so for example, the, the, the scholarship, you pay only 20 cents for the whole month. So 20 tickets, it's approximately the same payment for a whole month. The other, the other option is to take a, a, a bike. So here in Strasbourg, you can get used bikes uh, below 80 euros, I would say. Uh, new ones you can always get very expensive, but no below 200. Uh, and there is also this company called Wellhop. Uh, they also rent bikes, which for students in the first year is 42, then is good for the second year is 48, and then 56 and so uh, and above. So after the third year, you pay 56 per year. Yeah. So. Uh, this is also nice. The, the bikes are almost everywhere. The stations are almost everywhere. Uh, Strasbourg is improving their uh, cycling roads. Uh, so it's uh, more or less uh, comfortable to bike. So this is uh, also a good option, uh, depending on uh, how much people are willing to pay for a bike or not. Uh, also, Strasbourg doesn't have the best uh, reputation uh, about uh, not being uh, the bike, the bikes are being stolen. So uh, that's also a point to consider it. But yeah, I think any of these two options is more cheaper than pay every single day your own ticket. So I don't know if, if anyone have a questions, please just interrupt. I also trying to be pay attention. Oh, there's some. Okay, okay. So okay, I'm going to stop for a moment here and read the the YouTube. So there is Simon Rincon also from a Cuban students from Venezuela, from my country. Uh, he will join in the M1 in September. Uh, stick S A T O eight. Uh, so I am Felix. I'm a new student in M1 Cuban program in Strasbourg. I did my bachelor in Lille, France. So another uh, new student which come from France. That's nice. And I am coming in Strasbourg in September to enjoy to join the M2 and condensed matter program. So, place to meet you, Simon. Place to meet you, Felix. Uh, 
also uh, hi everyone I'm from Morocco Soli Sineb uh, I will join for the master two in radiation physics detector and instrumentation and imaging. So place to meet you all. So yeah, that's it for the inscription and the, and the CVC. So yeah. Okay, so if anyone in YouTube or here have a question, please just interrupt. Uh, I, I have a question. Um about the uh, registration so how long how long usually how long does it take to finish it because i like two weeks ago i submitted my all the documents all the required documents and then now i still waiting for them to check it so how long how so so okay maybe you can explain me a bit better uh when when i when i did for example a registering e candidate then I have to go directly to the office of the Scolarité, which is the section in the faculty who is in charge of, uh, yeah, complete the, 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 the formal registration. Uh, I guess now they are doing it online. And for me at that time, it took like at least two or three weeks after I went to the office. Okay. I see. So I guess you are in this in the uh, when you said that you did your registrations and send your file was to these people. I I, I did it online because uh, on the on the website of the university I saw the announcement to do it online and then I submitted all the required document. I think I I am at the last step and now just waiting for the results you know, like for them to check my documents. But yeah, I, I think. Uh, I did it two weeks ago and I haven't got the answer. So I just want to ask for how long will this process will be normally? Yeah, so I, th I think usually it's between two or three weeks. Uh, uh, the, the, the so thing. Hello, back. I'm back again. Uh, so just uh, no, it's like that normally, but because we're in France and because it's the summer, Maybe it will take more time because uh, during July and August, a lot of people are taking their summer break, including the people that are working in the administrative part of the faculty. So maybe they will just come, maybe if you don't have uh, much luck, maybe the person that's in charge of uh, doing the administrative uh, in, uh, inscription for you is uh, on summer break and maybe he will only, or he or she will only come back in maybe in two weeks or three weeks at the end of August. But Normally, by the beginning of September, it's, it should be done. And you don't have to be registered to start um, following lessons. I see. Thank you very much. Yeah. I don't know, because I went, I went uh, away. Uh, you answered, I guess, the questions on the YouTube chat. Uh, so I read them. Uh, I didn't see any questions in cell. Yeah, I mean, it's not questions, but you, you saw them. OK. Yep. And, uh, yep. You explained about the administrative inscription and the pedagogic inscription. Ah, that's the name. Uh, I said academic and administrative. So, but yes, the name is pedagogical, not academic. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I explained that, uh, but I don't know how long takes him the M1. For example, I know in the M2, you have like a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, two or three weeks uh, before you have to complete the pedagogical one with the coordinator of the program. Pedagogical one is done in September, and yeah, it's uh, normally it should be done before the twenty, the twenty something of September. It depends on the year. But yeah, it, exactly. It, it, you start it after the administrative one, and once you were there, if you were there, if you're not there, then you should do, you need to contact the person in charge and see with them. Yeah, I mean that's also something important to point out. I think for each uh, master program, there is a professor in charge, so a coordinator. Uh, I, yeah. so, I don't know if they change this oftenly. Uh, I, they don't change it often, but uh, right right now, I mean, this year they changed some of them. But uh, if you just give me one minute, I can maybe show the website and uh, show people. Yeah. Because yeah. now I'm on my, on my computer because I was in the car before. Don't worry, I so, wasn't driving. I, I, I so I'm going to change uh, this because I'm not going to give uh, any publicity for these two companies. <laughs> uh, so let me just. So 
So for the masters, okay. Can I share the screen? I will try. Uh, oh, I yes. Right now. Should I stop? You just need to put me as co-host again. Uh, Denise, co-host. Okay. So here I'm on the uh, website of the um, well of the uh, how do you say it of the faculty. And all the administrative stuff is done in, in the faculty, as I guess Manuel has told you. So the faculty that's in the Esplanade campus. And you have um, some masters. And the two masters that are important for us are the physics masters and the material masters. So for the physics masters uh, program, the let's say the, the main teacher that's uh, responsible, the main professor that's responsible for this, is called uh, Janos Polunich. Let me look if I can see him. Okay, no, sorry, they changed it this year because, they have, as I said, there was a lot of change this year. It's Thierry Charita. So uh, you can find all of it on the website. And here it's this guy. He's the main, uh, main guy for the physics um, master in Strasbourg. And also he will be, um, he's also part of QMAT. So that's nice. So if you need something, you can contact him on this well mail here so just be careful the dot at dot is actually a, an at uh, a rubber a rubber yeah the the a with the circle around it so you can contact him on this email and uh yes he's, he's fluent in english i guess all of them are but just so you know uh and you can contact him for every question you have concerning the master of physics uh now let me just yeah uh you also have to know um, that each M2 and each uh, and the M1 has uh, another um, professor coordinator. Like coordinator, yes. So for the condensed matter and nanophysics, it's uh, actually uh, Mebarek Alwani. So you can contact him also. So you, again, you can, yeah, here is the directly the email, but uh, you can contact him uh, also. Um, by email and ask any questions. So they are very open and they can answer really any questions you have. Uh, and the, yeah, I will not do all of them. So I guess that we have also somebody from uh, PSA Astroparticles here. So for the Astroparticles, the uh, new um, supervisor is actually, let me look at it. They change it, I don't know if they change it on the website. Okay, so here it's it's written Jerome Bodo. It's not actually him, but if you contact him, he will answer to you without problem. So he's changing this year. Uh, and the new one is called uh, Boris Ipolit, if you need this information. Uh, this is for PSA, and uh, you can look for every M2 in physics that there is uh, on the website. So the website is this one, physicingenierie.unistra.fr. And then you just go here because it's in French, it's unfortunate, on formation, and then you choose masters. And so for the material masters, and because there are people from these two, uh, the people you should contact are, uh, let me just look at it, because that, this one I'm not very familiar with. Uh, I guess it will depend. It will depend if you're M1 or M2. So the best thing you should do is just go on the website and look for the material masters yeah. you should contact. And, and I th this one is for the M1, for example, Jérôme Combe is for the M1. And uh, yeah, so these are the people you can contact for any question about the courses or even the inscriptions, the, I mean, the, um, yeah, the inscriptions. Yeah, and I think uh, if you are in contact with some professors already, because they have writing to you, uh, it's because they, they are uh, surely the, the, the people in charge of your master. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I just have a question yeah. about the, 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 uh, this, the link where I can uh, upload the documents because I am just waiting for my visa. My visa, my visa is not yet out and it should, should be out in a few days. Um, so that would be my next step. So just um, 
um, the link where I can upload the documents for the academic registration or um, or even if there is an administrative registration that can be done online. OK, uh, let me just I will think the best thing is to share it in the chat. So we we'll just uh, I'll just look for it. You can uh, maybe talk take maybe five minutes for me to find it and then I will share it in the chat. OK, all right. OK, so you're in the master of physics, right? Yeah, I'm in an M1. Yeah, OK. Uh, OK, so in the meantime, so something that, okay, is that this might be related with you, Abdallah. So you, what you are probably all of you doing right now, it's applying to visa for, I mean, international students, of course, uh, applying to visa in the M French embassy of your country, in your country. Uh, but this is, you, it must be understood that the visa is just for entering to France within a period of, of a year. They usually give a, uh, if it's a long visa, it's one year. If it's a short visa, I believe it's six months. I don't know exactly which one they are going to give to the students, uh, but usually if you're going to stay more than six months, they just give you one year visa. But after that, uh, you as soon as you arrive in France, you have to go for a resident permit, which is basically a certificate or a document that says, yes, you're living in France, and you are registered in the prefecture, which is a kind of a mayor of the of the of the yeah of the region or the city. So the prefecture, uh, it's uh, in the in the place of La République. Uh, there is the website here. If you want to do an appointment, you must do it online. Uh, few weeks ago it was still closed because the everything was closed here uh, but they expect that soon in September they will open again for for start doing documents uh, issuing documents and uh, taking attention of the public otherwise the university always open in Platan the 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 building I mentioned before and the prefecture uh, I have uh, people uh, with some material and machines to attend the students in there. So it's a dedicated office of the prefecture for student cases. So then you don't have to go to the prefecture with uh, like a normal people, or not, okay, not normal people, but uh, people that are not the students, okay. Uh, so after the person requests the resident permit, they will receive just a paper, like at this size, which is called a recipe, which is a, a certificate that you request the, the residence permit. Uh, when the resident, per, resident permit has been approved, you will receive a tiny car, an ID, which is the one that I show here in the top right, uh, with your picture, your information, etc. And this is very important because then you can, uh, go out of the country and get in of the country when country um, where country is France. So you can go out to Germany, of course, whenever you have a valid passport and get in France again without any problem. Uh, also, if you any of you wants to go to to your home country for holidays or for break, uh, spring break or winter break, uh, and come back to France, you can also do it whenever you have this car, not the recipes. Recipes is just sort of a uh, recipient. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, the, this is important. Maybe this is slightly different now with the whole situation, but I won't expect it's too much different. So now the housing. We know a few of you are looking for for residence or place to stay. So in here in Strasbourg, there is a three main ways to get housing. First is a student residence. The second is a, a colloque, which is a, a flat sharing. Uh, and the third one, it's uh, with a private single uh, housing. So here you live alone in a sharing, in a live alone in a rented place, or you live with others in a rented place, or you live in a student residence. The, the the cruise is transferred uh, on every all of this is it's a uh, summarizing this a uh, guide of uh, of housing of from the University of Strasbourg that I believe 
that you receive in the first emails from QMAT. So just summarizing a bit more the relevant ones from my uh, experience, uh, Cruise is the, I would say more accessible uh, in terms of economy and accessible that it's close to the campus so it doesn't require too much. Uh, they have as, yes? If I just may say something, it's close to the campus if you're in the center. But if you're in the M2, uh, there, there are no residences that are very close to the Grenoble campus. Uh, course. So yes, it just depends if right. you want to be in the center of the city of, or not. And also a piece of information because of the whole COVID thing, uh, a lot of uh, French students that normally didn't apply to have a course residence uh, did apply this year because, well, they lost their job or they were in financial problems because of the pandemic. And so they are, it's much more harder to find a course uh, residence right now than it was the years before. So it's uh, really unfortunate for this. Yeah. Yeah. Usually cruise is the most uh, yeah requested by students because it's cheap and have all in some way commodities. So you don't have to. I mean, you have a common kitchen usually, you have a common toilet, so you don't have to worry about cleaning this. Uh, they're usually clean. I, I, so when I came here in, in Strasbourg, I uh, I went to a cruise residence in Pulapel, so close to the central campus. Uh, was very cheap, was a tiny room. I mean, it was like 10 meters square. Uh, was approximately 175 euros per month. Uh, that without the housing help. So France have a housing help for anyone who applies, who live in France, including student resident, residents, uh, resident. Uh, uh, this is also, yeah, something that you can apply and then you get, depending on your income, depending on the cost of your rental house and your actual status, you will get more or less uh, aid from the state. Uh, so yeah. So cruise is, uh, is uh, cheap and accessible, but very, very uh, competitive in some way. So yeah, don't bet all your options on that. The other option, it's like a, a bit more private, I would say, uh, residence, which um, like Amitel. This Amitel, it's uh, a bit more expensive and sometimes can be also very expensive depending what you're, what you're looking for. Uh, but it's an option. And the other one that he also suggests is Leon Kwan. Leon Kwan is basically a kind of eBay. If somebody if you knows eBay, it's where people... Or maybe in the more appropriate uh, comparison is Craigslist, if you know what Craigslist is. Uh, no. It's uh, American. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's, it's American. It's exactly the same thing. It's just a French, uh, the French people uh, copy. Okay. okay. It's, okay. it's pri private people that give uh, like... Uh, uh, little uh, ads, uh, mm -hmm. private ads concerning anything. So, but you can find housing ads too. Yeah, and actually, you can also publish your request. You can so you can do offers or request. Uh, I did, for example, uh, a request of a of a studio when I when I changed to PhD, and was very effective. Uh, of course, I think if you want to do a, a public request and make it more visible, then you have to pay a tiny fee, but it's uh, like one, uh, two or three euros. So it's not that, I mean, yes, it's an inversion, but if it works, it's very nice. So this is the, the other option. Uh, also here, I think you can find colloques. So colocacion, it's uh, when you live in a, sh a sharing flat. Uh, colocacion, usually it's a... Uh, uh, Two or three, I, I haven't seen two persons, but I think three or more people in a place. Yeah. And you you share the, the expenses, you share the, well, obviously the rent. So then you get a, a, a fraction of the rent that you have to pay. Uh, also you have to, you, when you are in, either in Cruz or Amita or any residence, you have to pay the house insurance or tax habitation. And this is all, uh, will be shared in uh, if you are in a colloquium, you, you you pay between the people, the number of people there are. 
just a quick correction tax d'habitation is actually the housing uh, ah yeah yeah so how as assurance assurance habitation exactly sorry assurance uh, habitation and generally uh, in, in france the most easy, easiest way to get an i don't know for uh, for foreign students how did you get for example uh, an insurance anyway? so for the cruise for the cruise i got it through mhel mgl yeah. and i got that yeah, a year a year uh, insurance uh it was 56 euros for my tiny room for the whole year so approximately like yeah three four euros per month of course and it's also, one payment it's a single payment so it's 56 at once and every bank also if you i mean if you not if you don't want to do, do any bank in france can actually do you uh, uh housing insurance and they are all approximately the same price Yes, that's 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 totally true. Uh, in my new place, I also have uh, with my bank, and that's uh, bring me to something very important. Something that you have to do as soon as you arrive to France is to create a bank account. So create a bank account, get a uh, uh, phone number. There is many many good options in France. They have a uh, Red SFR. It's a company. I didn't put it in these slides, but I can add it later. As Red SFR, it's a good one. Have very cheap internet and good deals. Uh, free, it's another company who have very good deals. It's not free. It's called free, but it, it you should pay. Exactly, exactly. The name of the company is free, but, uh, but the prices are also very good. The, I mean, the deals are also very good. And I don't know a third option. And there is also a uh, Buig Telecom and they have what's called uh, actually there is in france there are four main uh, phone of um, service providers yes companies there is sfr Bouygues telecom orange and free and okay. uh, each of them has a low cost uh, phone uh has, has a, like a, a low cost uh, monthly payments mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's also without any uh, obligation Engagement. An engagement. engagement. Yes. You, okay. you pay month by month. If you want to cut your uh, service because you're not satisfied, cut your service, you can just call and the next month it will be cut. And they're sure. called Red for SFR, uh, B and U for Buig, uh, Sosh for Orange, and the free, well, free is actually free is a low cost in itself. So, okay. Uh, if you want exactly the details, it's generally around 20 euros per month. If you want to have unlimited internet, unlimited uh, messages and unlimited calls. So it's a good deal. But then you can also have um, things like, for example, free those things like for only three euros per month, you have uh, two hours of calls and unlimited messages. So it depends on what you want, but it's there are really cheap options for the telephone. Yes, and also yeah. depends on the country where you're from. Because I'm just saying this for people from, for example, Abdallah from Egypt and from people from Africa. There is also one thing that's called Lika Mobile or Lika Mobile. It's a phone provider that has uh, good deals. Uh, it's not a monthly payment. This one you need to recharge, recharge uh, as long. Uh, I mean, if you want to use it, it's a prepaid. It's not a postpaid. You need to pay before using it. But it has a lot of deals with uh, African countries. And for example, unlimited calls to certain African destinations. So it's called the Leica Mobile. If you want. right, right, that's cool. Yes, I mean, if you compare, so for example, just crossing the border in Germany, the the internet's very expensive. It's approximately the average is like twenty euros for two gigabytes of downloads. While here in France, you pay, for example, I pay fifteen euros for for sixty gigabytes per month. Yeah, Plus 15 when they say, out of France. Just be careful. When they say unlimited internet, it's unlimited, but like you have uh, maximum un, capacity uh, or something. No, it's not maximum capacity, but like you have uh, un, uh, like the fastest internet possible until you get to 60 gigas, and then you still have internet, but it's uh, much more slower. But extra charge. Uh, uh, yeah, and you pay extra charges as well. Sorry? You pay extra charges as well not okay. it depends that does a thing it depends because some of them you don't need to pay extra charges but it's just slower so you need to be careful when they say unlimited when they say unlimited internet they mean they have 
you have a free internet and fast internet into like, for example, 60 gigas or 20 gigas, or it depends. And then after that, you still have it, but it's very slow, but you have it if you need it. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but but also, in Germany, you can, yes. sorry, but when you talk about Germany, every, uh, no matter what telephone number you use, it's, you can also use it in Germany and in uh, all European countries, and you can also use it to call. Uh, yes, but if you bring your, but if you, if you bring your cell phone from, from other European countries, you, you might lose it in, within three months, because it's not legal to stay with a, a foreigner company in France. So, yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's very cheap because in, in Germany it's very expensive. I mean, you just get two gigabytes for the same or double of the price. Uh, yeah, there is nothing. Uh, it's also, yeah, sorry for the question before for the link. So I will send in the chat uh, here uh, a link. So it will depend how you. I don't know if I can share the screen, maybe I will just to show the link for the inscription, for the enrollment for the inscription in the link if you want. I can um, stop if you want. Yeah, because it's not okay. Right. Yes. So if you go to the link, I will I, I sent in the chat. So I also sent it in the YouTube chat. So if you go to this link, you end up on this web page here. And uh, it depends if you this one is not for you, this one is for you know, people that just got their uh, out of high school. But then it depends if you were admitted by e candidat or uh, through a company staff. Through company staff, this one. And there are two different links. And then you go go there and they ask, they tell you what you need to do before uh, the inscription. And they also give you links to where to go uh, to do this. For example, what you told before the CEVEC, you can do this. And then you go on this, uh, what's it here for online translation? Uh, and then you, I have read, and you go on the, uh, you go on the, uh, on the link. So, you know, you have the link here. I share it in the, in the YouTube and in the Zoom chat. I guess you got it, right? Yeah, I, I pasted it on YouTube. Yeah, I got it as well. Okay, nice. So, yeah. So I think, yeah, that's uh, the important part. Uh, I think every one of you who comes to France also uh, as if you are below 28, you are automatically insured by the social, the health insurance system in France. Uh, but if you are over 28, 28 or above 28, you must get uh, uh, either pay the, the the insurance, the French insurance, or get a private insurance. So that's also an important business. Uh, yes. Oh, also, I have something else. So, is there, if there is anyone, or maybe someone watches this, because I guess we'll we are recording it, so uh, people can watch it after that. But if in the Zoom meeting or in the um, YouTube meeting, there is anyone from the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Panama, South Africa, Kuwait, Qatar, Israel, Brazil, Peru, Algeria, Turkey, Madagascar, Oman, India. I know there are people from India, United States or Serbia. If there are any people from those countries, need to be very careful because uh, before boarding the plane, you will need to have a positive, um, I mean, a negative uh, COVID-19 uh, test result before boarding the plane. Otherwise, well, they can just tell you not to board the plane and you paid for nothing. So be careful if you come from these 16 countries. So I will just repeat it so people can be sure. So United, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Panama, South Africa, Kuwait, Qatar, Israel, Brazil, Peru, Algeria, Turkey, Madagascar, Oman, India, United States, and Serbia. So I guess in the Zoom meeting, there is no one from those countries, but if there is anyone from those countries in the YouTube meeting or that's watching this afterwards, be careful, you will be needing a negative COVID-19 um, PCR. So the, it's the it's a test that, well, it puts you on something in the nose to test if you have or not the COVID-19. 
and you need to have you need to have a negative test result before boarding the plane. Just to be you need to be careful. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. So, yes. Sorry, I have a question uh, regarding uh, the bank account, uh, opening a bank account when you uh, arrive in France. I think uh, you need uh, to have an address to open a bank account. Does that mean I have to uh, already have found a residence in order to open a bank account or does that work? Yeah, yes, I, I will say yes, because uh, otherwise the, if they want to send you any piece of information, you, they, they don't have any, anywhere to send it. So yes, the, the order will be find your housing, and right? And Sorry. It, and it can be quite problematic because I know a lot of foreign students have this problem because some people for the housing want you to have a bank account first. Yes, yeah, that's, a, that's a circle. A... So that's why I'm asking. And, and this circle is very well known for any foreign students that's coming in France. Yeah. And to be honest, uh, it will depend normally, generally, what I have, I had friends that had this problem, and normally what they say is that before the housing, they tell people I still don't have a bank account, and I will be needing the housing first. So what they do is that they pay upfront for the first month, and then they have an address that they can give to the bank to create a bank account, and they they can give this bank account to the company that, or to the man or to the person that uh, is uh, responsible for the housing, for the next month. So this is generally something that some yeah. people do, but it will depend on the well, on the people, on the person that's or the or the company that's renting you the the housing. Yes, and also you need the housing if you want to continue with the uh, resident permit. So they will also request you where, where you're staying in France. Where will be your address? So uh, generally, the first thing to do is really the housing and yeah you explain the situation to the person or to the company that you still don't have a bank account and you first need an address in order to create a bank account. And so yeah. generally what they do, they either um, have faith in you and they say, okay, it, it happens, especially if it's private, if you do it, uh, if the, the renter is, some, is, is a private person. But if it's a company, generally they will ask you to pay the first month upfront and then they will give you the address and then you can do the, the whole thing. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, and I know, yeah. Uh, the housing is more, uh, most of the key for the other things. Because also uh, in the, now that I was thinking also in the health insurance, you will need your address. Um, yeah, the university also, you need that address. So as much as possible, if you, even if you can get a uh, housing before getting here, which is very difficult, I understand, because even being here is difficult, uh, would be the best. Uh, that would be the ideal. So yeah. So the last thing I wanted to show regarding also housing is that uh, there is something called bizarre. This is what uh, so Denise was explaining that you need somebody that guarantee to the to the landlord or landlady that you are going to pay so the state uh, offer to the students our young people to be the the garant the the guarantee person or the guarantee yes. thing yes. Uh, this is for free for students uh, i think up to 30 years old of course you need to have a valid permit residence you need to have a kind of uh, support that you are you will have money to pay your rent and everything so for example the, the uh, uh, certificate of the scholarship which should be enough uh, but this is kind of a straightforward it's made online and it works pretty well uh, the CAF as I mentioned before the CAF is this uh, system for so uh, housing aid uh, so this is also I mean, it's a bit of paperwork, but works quite well with, uh, regarding the payments. Uh, if you get it for September, uh, you still not to receive it until I believe October, and then you receive and three months as a reimburse yeah. usually. That's the important information. It's retroactive. So that means that even if you applied, like for example, in January, and if you say that, and you have, if you have proof that you have uh, an application since uh, September, well, then they will pay you for all the months before even if you applied after that. Yeah, 
Exactly. Um, yeah, and I also strongly encourage to all of you to take uh, this link of the, the, the guide of uh, housing from the university. It's very well detailed and have all these other options and very well detailed explanations of each of these things. Uh, and even more options that I'm not mentioning here. So I think that's uh, more or less what I have. So I hope to see you soon here in Strasbourg. Uh, if any of you have uh, any questions regarding, I don't know, uh, I just think about the uh, clothes, food, uh, cost, I don't know what other costs they can be. Uh, please don't hesitate to do it even now, or yeah, I see Denise and me we are mostly managing the social networks of QMET. Uh, so you can also ask through the social networks if you don't feel comfortable doing it here. Uh, also, you can write us by email. I believe most of our emails are online. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, I was wondering more uh, regarding to um, QMAT. Um, I've read on the website there is some kind of activities with... Um, mentors and things we have to do extra that people in the let's say normal masters without QMAT do not have to do and if you could like uh, explain yeah what so, uh, that's all about <laughs> so normally if you're part of QMAT first if you're in the so you uh, you will start in the M1 or M2 uh, M1 okay so we'll just say for, for everyone normally if you're in the master, you will need to do um, for the M1 two more courses. You need to take two more courses that will not uh, be in your um, the. You you can choose freely any two courses you want. You just need to inform the supervisors, and generally they're okay with it. And uh, but this doesn't count for the average, right? For the grades. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, these two doesn't, do, do not count for the final mark that will decide if you passed the year or not. Okay. But you will need to do it in order to be part of QMAT. Okay, and are these, uh, is there some kind of list of courses which we have to choose from or is it really um, up to us well, to... There are elective courses. Uh, each semester you have... Uh, for the M1 and for the M2, it's the same, but only one elective course. Not two. Okay. So for the master, each master semester, you will have uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, mandatory courses, and then you will have some uh, elective courses. And there, we, there is a list of elective courses, and you can find the list on uh, on uh, the web page of your uh, the M1 or M2 that you will be taking. And uh, you can choose, you need, for example, for the M1 to choose, uh, I guess, three elective courses. And then for QMAT, you need to take two more, but it's really uh, up to you. So you can take uh, any three and any two you want, but um, it's preferred to take something that has to do with uh, quantum physics, nanomaterials, uh, astrophysics, more than, for example, soft matter physics. But you can do it and depending on your motivation, they will accept it, but generally, they just prefer you to do something that's more in the QMAT part, but it's okay. not mandatory, so it's really up to you. I don't know if this answered this part of the question. Uh, yeah, I was just um, so so basically, if um, let's say I have to take three um, three um, elective courses in my masters, and for QMAT mm -hmm. I have to take two more, so five in total, and three of mm -hmm. them will be marked and will be uh, will influence my total mark for the semester. Yeah. And uh, two of them will not. They're just for general... And that's, and that's fixed. So you need to be careful okay. what you take at the beginning of the year because you cannot, at the end of the year, uh, say, I don't, oh, this one I got a better mark and this one not, so can I exchange it so this one counts and this one not. Okay, so no. at the beginning of the semester, you choose it and then the three you choose. Well, you will have maybe two weeks, like a kind of retrocutation. So for two weeks, you can maybe ask the person in charge of the uh, administrative part to change it for you. But after those two weeks, it's uh, it's fixed. And then, well, there are three uh, elective courses that you need to uh, get a good mark to pass. And then two, that it's better if you do, but if you don't, it's not uh, catastrophic for you, for the validation of the master. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
and for the mentors now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just, uh, about that too. So uh, it's once you come here, you uh, do your inscription, uh, you have settled here, or you once you set in France for good, uh, and once you have started your lessons, actually, you will need to choose one uh, professor or one researcher from the University of Strasbourg or from any partner university for the UCO. So from Strasbourg, from Karlsruhe, from Basel, from Mulhouse, or Freiburg. So if it's something called UCO, you can look, it's the European campus. It's a partner, it's a, some partner universities. But anyway, you choose a researcher and a professor from any of those. Generally, it's, well, the University of Strasbourg. It can be one of your teacher, but it can also be someone that just does something you like. What's best and what's advised is to choose someone that's not uh, in the specialty you will be doing. For example, if you want to do high energy physics, well, you can maybe look someone in condensed matter physics or someone in uh, informatics, in computer science, for example. Uh, but that has something to do with um, physics or science in general. And this, person will be your QMAT mentor. So if this person will be first uh, someone that will be available for you to ask questions for help in order, for example, to find an internship or in order to, uh, in order to find information about a topic or even, for example, in order to help you with some calculations for your internship, you're doing an internship and you cannot find a, a way to get out of what, find a way to do the calculations, thing like this. So this kind of people can help you and uh, guide you in your um, in what you in your project in your um, professional project in your research projects. And what's advice, as I said, is to choose someone that's not doing the same, um, let's say, the same specialty as you want. That's because of the multidisciplinarity part. So, for example, I'm doing. Um, a lot of uh, quantum science and molecular science and things like this. And my mentor is someone that does theoretical, uh, theoretical um, sure. particle sure. physics. Yeah. Something like this. Okay. And yeah. uh, finally, the extra, the, there is a bit more of extra work that's required for QMAT students. And that's extra, not that's out of the, um, only the academics is uh, what uh, I was talking about at the beginning. It's the YIG, the Young Investigators Group. So it's, um, it's a group of all Q math students automatically. And uh, so it's just a way for all the students to uh, organize events or to uh, organize things together. Um, for example, uh, to organize a group visit somewhere or to organize a group travel to a conference or to organize even a summer school in Strasbourg or to do a news newsletter or anything you want. Actually, it's, you, you choose the idea. And if, if it's approved by the committee of QMAT, the supervisors, it's okay. For example, uh, this year, we also did a lot of goodies for QMAT, uh, a lot of... Uh, for example, uh, tote bags, uh, pants, um, backpacks, and things like this that we can offer to people that are going somewhere thanks to QMAT. But anyway, or as Manuel said, there were also travel to a summer school that was all paid by QMAT. Uh, it was an initi initiative of the YIG. Um, and what's expected from QMAT students is also to partake in some of those activities, not like, not not be full in this and only do this and uh, be a, a, a core part of the group, but uh, have ideas to propose or um, propose a help if needed for some projects or for some organization. Things can be as stupid as uh, some QMA students organized uh, a seminar, and then you can help in setting up uh, everything for the seminar in, uh, in uh, so, welcoming the guests and etc. things like this. So, so, so I can give an example of those. So, uh, my, uh, at the end of the la my last year, so in 2019, uh, a, a group of of Jig, we organized a mini workshop of quantum computing, and we even bring uh, two researchers from IBM. That's an example, and they gave us uh, some a basically day seminar or a workshop 
that day, we call it mini workshop, uh, we learn from them. Uh, and of course, this was uh, an idea that pop ups from, from, from us. Right, so that's just an example. There, maybe your interests are related to material science, and then you are interested to uh, to hear some specific talks from uh, people in 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 the industry, so in specific companies, or you even want to hear it from professors that are I don't know in Paris or Grenoble or whatever other places. So, Jake, it's uh, it, it's it's beyond the, the academics, yes. Uh, but always with a, with a target to improve or uh, make a, a, a new addition to your career, to, to your profession. So for example, uh, we also have a, this, the, this project of newsletter. Uh, we have to work on that. We need, always, of course, people uh, for that. So new students are always welcome to these kind of projects. We also would like to do at some point some summer school uh, in such a way that uh, we can, uh, I mean, it's not very realistic that all QMED students can go, to, can go to some specific school if they want to, okay? So it's it's better if we can just take a, our initiative and say, well, we would like to hear about this, this topic, this person, this person, this person, or this group and this group and this group, uh, or these uh, specific topics on this and we can organize it ourselves. In that way, you not only do something that goes into your CV, but you also do networking. Networking that it's going to work either for finding an internship for the M1 or M2, but also positions for your PhD. Uh, here in France, the getting a, a PhD position is very, very competitive. It's very, it's very rigorous, right? And also it's very short. So maybe you would like to do it in, I don't know, in Germany or Switzerland, in Italy, Spain, England, or Denmark, whatever. And this is a good way to open a door for meet other people, meet other researchers uh, that in the end uh, you would like to, uh, I don't know, uh, grow that relation, right? And then maybe simp that- Simply to have an entry point if you want to contact yeah. them. Like, uh, you went to this yeah. event and I was organizing it or you went to this event, I was there and yeah. I wanted, what you said was very interesting and I wanted to contact you because of this is this. And it's not only for PhD positions, it's also for postdocs or even the permanent positions. Yeah, further down the line. And also yeah. another example we did is you can find on your on your YouTube channel, uh, you can find the seminars that Manuel, uh, mainly Manuel actually, organized uh, with the QMAT uh, Cafe. QMAT Cafe with uh, researchers. That's exactly what he said. And he contacted people that he wanted to, who who he thought would have interesting talks to give either students or teachers or professors, and uh, they did talks uh, online uh, as yeah. part of QMAT. And so QMAT so, yeah. can always help you financially for any project that you have in this kind of fashion. Exactly, whenever it's, always, of course, always uh, well justify. It's not like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you cannot, ask, you cannot ask for a Tesla for each new um, master student. <laughs> even, even if the Tesla has a QMAT logo on it, it won't work. <laughs> we already tried. We wanted to get a fan for, for bring pizza and, and beer, but no, that didn't work that well. <laughs> but actually, uh, QMAT has, uh, helps, for example, if you organize some um, uh, events. Um, Hello? Is, I'm still connected or? I think uh, Dennis. Uh, Dennis got. Yeah. yeah he so, yeah. So I think that uh, th this is something very char characteristic from QMAT from this uh, graduate school. So I think anyone who gets in QMAT should try to enjoy this because I've seen on our uh, schools that doesn't have this. And yeah, at the end, when you go to PhD, you will let the people, oh, hey, you students will notice that uh, was a good thing to have this kind of support to do this kind of projects. And also there is a group of industry in QMAT. So if you want to do any contact with the industry, with uh, uh, getting new other positions or go to visit to a company, uh, this is usually... Uh, Sorry, I lost my internet connection. I, I'm yes. <laughs> Good. Okay. So, any any other questions here, or any other comments? 
uh, I have one question about you know, like living in Strasbourg. Like uh, my my French is not really good, and I, I I think I cannot talk like with native speakers. I think you French people talk very fast, and I think I cannot catch up and communicate with you. So is it uh, like uh, disadvantage for me? It, it, it's a good I, point I was having bringing. the same question actually. Yeah, it, it's a very good point you're bringing. We didn't tackle on that at, at all. It depends, but generally, uh, a lot of Manuel knows more than me, I think, because when you came to France, you also had a lot of struggle with French, I guess. Yes, a lot. But, <laughs> generally, you, uh, your fellow students will know English, so you can talk with them in English without any problem. And a lot of students in Strasbourg do know English. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So if you find uh, young people on the streets, you can always try to, if you want to ask directions, things like this, you can always try to ask English and you have maybe a 70 or 80% chance of them speaking English. But for older people, it can be problematic, especially if those older people are part of the administrat administration of the University of Strasbourg. Yes. That's uh, actually where I had the most struggling in the scolarité. The, 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 I have to say the people were not the most kind people ever I, I, I have met. Uh, so yeah, I have to really squeeze it's, my it's French. A it's a trope in France. It's, it's a cliche. It's a stereotype that yeah. everybody that works in the administration is not kind. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it's not true. Uh, don't worry, it's not true. But uh, you can have a bit of problems. The main problem you have if you don't speak let's say good French or passable French is with people in the administration that don't always know English, but they will generally try to understand you. They will not like just dismiss you because of that. And apart from that, generally for the day-to-day -day life, you won't have too much problem because people in the shops generally know English, or if not, you always find someone that knows English and that will help you for the translation of things like this. Yeah, and for example, if you want to go to shopping supermarkets, the, they have uh, self-scanning machines, so you can easily put it in English and just start scan your stuff and do your payment. So, best. for example, uh, you will not die for uh, starving. For example. <laughs> yeah, not for you. You always need. Uh, and and also something they tried to do. It was I mean before coming, it was looking information on the internet is to always try to come in the French and ask like, yeah, would you ask you for the English? Uh, like, hello, do you speak English? And then they will say yes or no, of course. Or they usually say, yeah, well, a little bit. Uh, and then you can try to, yeah, uh, sort the, the French. Uh, but, regarding, yeah. re regarding people that speak German, it's actually easier if you speak German because way more people know German, especially all the people know German in Strasbourg. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and as for the the academic program, are there any are there any components that will be influenced by the the French language skills? Because um, I received an email that the first week will be in English. So, would there be any other um, occasions, any other parts of the program that uh, that will need French skills? So, can you just remind us uh, uh, what pro master program you're doing? So, yeah, I'm M1, um, um, subatomic particles. Yeah. Um, so just the first week uh, uh, the will be in French, the lectures will be in French. So yeah. um, I'm wondering, uh, would this be uh, the only week where we will have to use French or would there uh, be any other? In M2, uh, part? In M2 it's actually, it's M in M2, uh, I didn't even know that the first week is in French. Generally, the whole M2 is in English. So I don't know. Yeah, it's M1. Ah, M1. Yes, M1. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, uh, I was. I, I don't know whether you know that Denise, but I think M1 is suffering some changes this year. It last year know. actually. Also, last but year. yeah, but yeah, for M1, uh, normally the whole M1 will be in English, and especially if you don't don't hesitate to make yourself present, because last year we had some problems that students were English speaking. And the teacher starts, the, the professor started the course by asking, is there any English speaking uh, students here? Nobody answered and he started to do the course in French. But don't hesitate to make yourself present and say, yes, I'm an English speaking student. 
and then they will do the whole course in English because they are, need to do the course in English. They just do it sometimes in French because it's easier for them and nobody speaks, all the, for example, for some elective courses, they're only French speaking students and they just do it in French. But otherwise, even in the M1, it should be in English. So the first week is in French, but that's special because you're talking about the week in, in August, right? Exactly what the thing uh, no, and in September. Okay. I think uh, he said that the, they are going to what? like an introductory week or something. It is the recap, actually. You're doing just recaps of the previous years. And this one will be in French, actually. Yes, I know, I know. Because yeah, maybe, yeah. The, the, the professors that will be doing it actually don't speak English. Uh, that's why. The, but it's the only week. Yeah, that yeah, I see. English. Other than that, yeah. you might have some teachers that will start in French, but don't hesitate to make yourself present and say, sorry, I'm English thinking and I don't understand. And they will, they will do it in the yeah. English. Yeah, actually, I, I don't think it's a problem to, to live uh, uh, in France without knowing French. I lived uh, for, for five months in Saint Denis. Uh, so it was not, uh, yeah, I could survive without French, but um, I was just curious um, about the, the academic. Yeah. Well, now, now this right. explains how. Yeah, but don't worry. It's, it's only, uh, this is at least for the physics, for the materials uh, master. It's problematic because the whole course courses are in French, but for the physics, either M1 or M2, it will all be in English except this first week. But it's just for actually this first week is not even uh, how to say it. It's not even uh, in the curriculum. It's something that, that the, into teachers, the credit. Yeah, yeah. It's something that just the teachers do to help the students. Uh, yeah, yeah. Remember what they did the previous years or just learn new things that they maybe didn't learn just to be at the same level. But this is the only thing that will be in French. Yeah, all right. Good. Okay, so I don't see any other questions in the YouTube. I don't see either, so I guess it's okay. So uh, as Manuel said, we are all open to questions if you have it uh, later. So the most easier way is to contact us on Facebook or Twitter, because we are the ones that are dealing with this. But you can also send us an email or something. Or riot too. Oh, also, I don't know if you're all part of the riot, but if you're not, you, you can find the links on the Facebook page of the riots. So it's, it's a chat room, previously yeah. called Matrix now called something else. They change their names always, but yes. Yeah. Okay. So if there is no any further questions, uh, I will try to share this slide. Uh, maybe we can prove some more links with the ones that Denise shared before, and then try to put it in the QMAT website. So- Oh, at yeah. least, yeah. So just be something that you need to be uh, careful about this month of August is as I said in France, it's almost sacred, the summer vacation and almost nothing works on the month of July and August. So things might be a bit slow in August, uh, but uh, as soon as end of August, or beginning of September starts, uh, things will work much faster. This is concerning the academic part, concerning the, and concerning also maybe the administrative part, but concerning the housing, you can start right now with a problem. This is actually the period where they get the most, they are the most active. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're welcome YouTube people. Um, thank you very much for being here. Uh, hope to see you soon, all of you. Uh, hope there will be a kickoff meeting for the new year for the new QMAT student, new cohort. Uh, yeah, as Danny said, you can always contact us. So yeah, see you then. Um, bye.